Blood in Photoshop is way better than blood in real life, and I'm going to show you how to make it. Welcome to Halloween week, dudes and dudettes. This is my favorite week of the year, besides Christmas and Thanksgiving and my birthday week and April Fools because you get to dress up and do whatever you want. I have no idea what I'm gonna dress up as, but I've got a really cool shoot that I'm gonna be doing soon. It's gonna involve, get this, I'm pumped about it. It's crazy. It, we're gonna have a spider, right? It's gonna be like huge and like it's gonna get cut off here and then there's gonna be a girl with like cool makeup and hair. So it's gonna be like half spider, half girl and she's gonna be like ah, crawling over this thing. And I went out in the woods the other day and found this like awesome upturned like uh, tree thing and we're gonna shoot in there. So there's like this upturned tree and then imagine, okay? And then the spider girl's like here and she's like ah, and then down on the bottom there's a pit and then there's gonna be dude who's like, oh my God, there's a spider. He's, I don't know, maybe have his like clothes torn or something like that. He's gonna be holding up a lantern like, no. She's gonna have a black widow thing and everything like that. So this has got like crazy complex shot. We're gonna be doing the reds from, she's a black widow, the reds from that, we're gonna do yellows from a lantern, blues from the moon, all kinds of really cool stuff. And the whole spider part of her, I'm developing in computer graphics. I'm using like ZBrush, Cinema 4D, V-Ray, doing the complete thing, totally CG computer stuff. And I've never, ever, ever done it before. So I'm really excited. It's a ton of work and it's gonna turn out great and I can't wait. So that's what I'm doing for Halloween. Let me know your guys' Halloween stories, what's inspiring you, what's getting you going and things like that. We got a cool episode today, guys. We're making blood out of, um, well, from scratch. And today's episode, I wanna uh, congratulate, is brought to you by Wasif and Andrea who suggested that we do blood for Halloween week. If you guys have some suggestions on what you would like to do for Halloween week, let me know and we'll do them. And that's how we do things here at Flurn. We're gonna go ahead and get started into this. And I got some other cool questions to get to you um, when the questions come to my head. So this is all fake blood that I already created. And uh, this is a cool portrait I did a little while ago. When creating fake blood, we need a reference. So references are okay, guys. You can. You can use references and I, I really suggest you do use references. I just pulled this off of Google. So I went, typed in Google, I said blood on Google and this image came up. So we're not gonna use this image. Like this is not gonna be a part of our image, it's a reference. So don't worry about copyrights and everything like that. It's looking at it. It's the same thing as like, you know, looking at a fancy building and say, I wanna design something like that. So this is kind of our reference for our blood. Now, because we are gonna fake blood I want a place to make this blood come from and I've already used the nose and the eyes and everything like that. So we're gonna create bite marks here like she was bitten by a vampire. So this is like two tutorials. Get that, the two tutorials um, in one. I'm gonna show you guys how to make holes in someone's neck as well. So let's start off with a new layer. We're gonna make a hole right over here. Kind of complex, but I think you guys are gonna get it. What we need to do, we're gonna grab our brush tool. All right, let's choose a nice deep red, something like that. Looks good. We're gonna change our brush mode to multiply. Okay, so if I paint a little bit and then paint a little bit more, see how it's kind of getting darker every time? That's what we want for our blood. Let's just darken that up just a little bit. There we go. So as we continue painting it, it's just gonna get darker and darker and darker. That's kind of what blood does, right? So we've got that going on. We're gonna go into our brush menu. I'm gonna turn in shape dynamics. We're gonna turn up size jitter, okay? And I want to also turn up our scattering. We're gonna give it a little bit of scattering and we're gonna turn some opacity jitter on as well. All these controls can be off. So as I paint around now, you can just see it's a little bit more like wonky. I don't know, it's like, it's not as controlled. Um, the next thing I wanna do is back in my brush tip shape here, I wanna bring my hardness up just a little bit. Sorry, that's spacing. I wanna bring my hardness up. So now we're getting something that looks a little bit more like blood kind of flowing on the skin. There we go, let's go back to our layers. Now our last thing we wanna do for our brush, we're gonna take this opacity just is like how much you're painting and flow is like, um, it, it'll get up to 100% if that's what your opacity is, but flow, if you take this down to a small number, it's gonna only put a little bit on there and if you go back over your stroke over and over and over and over again, then it's just gonna kinda like keep building that up there. So that's really cool. And we're getting something that looks good. 
Now we're ready for our layer effects. So this is the hole here, okay? It's gonna start off something like this. You can make it bigger than you need to, doesn't matter. In fact, I probably will. There's our hole there. Very cool. So double click on this layer. We're gonna bring up our layer style here. Got so much to fit on the screen. We're gonna bring in this thing called bevel and emboss, okay? I'm gonna choose an outer bevel instead of an inner bevel. See what's going on there. We're gonna choose this to be down. See how it's in there? Now this is gonna depend on your light direction. My light is kind of coming from this way. So I need to make my highlight here and my shadow here because it's gonna be sucked in. If your light was coming from the other way, you'd have to do it the other way around. So it's just kind of got to look at it and see what's going on. Now we can change our angle here. You want to get that about the same as your light direction. And you can also change your depth. You can move each of these independently. All right, that's looking good. Now our colors, there's no reason for us to use black, right? So we're going to choose like a nice dark color that's already in her skin there. That looks pretty good. And our whites, we don't need to use, um, we don't need to use white either, right? Let's use something that's in her skin because this is supposed to be defining like her skin going in and coming out. Like, so black and white doesn't make sense as much as like dark skin color, light skin color. That's looking good. We're gonna bring in, so you can change things like your depth, like how deep you want that to look, um, your size and things like that, softening. We are going to look now at adding some texture. So click on that and just this bubble one that comes up for, is totally cool. I don't know, it don't, doesn't really matter, but you can do like change the scale of it and it's gonna just look a little bit different, okay? And you can change the depth as well. There we go. So see how that kind of gives it a little bit of like gnarliness to it? There we go. So it, it makes it not look just like so smooth. And that's really one of the keys when making an effect like this is you wanna put that texture in there. You don't want it to just make it look like super smooth, things like that. All right. That looks pretty good. Now the cool part is guys, wherever I paint with this, check this out. Wherever I paint, it's got that layer effect on it and it's like bringing in everything that I've already done. Isn't that cool? Yes, the answer is yes, in case you were wondering. Let's bring this color a little bit darker, maybe put a little bit more orange in it. All right, there we go. And now we're getting something that looks a little bit more like blood and holes. So I've got that, again, I can just kind of paint around wherever I want and it's gonna make this. It can make some really nasty stuff here, um, but we're not going to. Let's take a little bit of that orange out. We're gonna make some holes. So let's just hit Command A, selects everything, hit Delete, and then Deselect. So let's start off here and we're just gonna kind of make something like looks like holes. And I gotta press kind of a bunch of times here because Remember what I did earlier is I chose my flow to be down. So that's not, you know, that's not a bad thing. It just means that, um, there we go. Maybe we want our flow to be up a little bit. Kind of just experiment with this too, guys. Have some fun with it. Like figure out, you know, what, what do you want this to look like? To get the, to get the hole that you've always wanted. <laughs> What kind of hole have you always dreamed about but have never been able to make yourself? That's what I want. I'm gonna grab the eraser tool and just kind of like erase this out towards the edge there. All right, to get some nice little effects. Yeah, that's a kind of cool looking hole. I like that. I, I would believe that that would be coming out of someone's neck. Why not? Um, and then let's grab the eraser tool and kind of hit this a couple times too. So this is these are gonna be the holes that are going to be on her neck. Now, her neck is a little bit out of focus, so I'm gonna do just about everything right up here and then just move it. And see, look, it's on its own layer. Isn't that neat, rad? The coolest thing you've ever seen? Let me zoom in so you can see the, the beauty of it, the glory. Oh, the glory is so great with this one. There we go, those are our holes. Now, for our blood, let's get something that looks a little bit like this. And um, I got a little trick for you to making a shape like that. We're just gonna make a new layer, okay? We'll just grab our lasso tool and just do like this and make a roundy part at the end. Mm, brunk, something like that. Now hit this refine edge button. That's what it's gonna look like. Bring up your feathering a little bit and then bring up your contrast. And that's gonna help your, um, there we go. That's gonna help your edges be really nice and smooth. So that looks like blood now. With that, we're gonna use the same brush. 
we created earlier. Let's just continue to paint on there. You can hit Command H or Control H or whatever, and that's gonna hide your selection currently. There we go, your current selection. So your selection's still active, it's just hidden. There we go. And painting in here, you can see like that variability and stuff like that, that's gonna look pretty good. It's gonna look pretty good. Um, we're just gonna deselect and then go to Filter, Blur, and here to Gaussian Blur. Just give it a little blur at the edge so it kind of matches our, uh, there we go. It matches what's going on with the actual resolution of the image. All right, and then we can just kind of make this down a little bit more. If you want to like warp it around and do some cool stuff with it, just hit Command T and then click on this little warp button and then you can, there are all these cool warps like this flag warp, switch the direction of that and then it's like doing that stuff. You change the bend here. Yeah, that's cool. Hit enter and now you have the, you know, you started off with quite a bit of control and it's just moving around. So let's go ahead and move this stuff down to the neck. All right, down to the neck. We're looking pretty good. Um, if you wanted to, like if you wanna move these holes so they're like this instead of the other way, just grab a selection tool and select around the hole you want and then move it. Pretty easy, right? Let's grab our move tool. Maybe make these a little bit bigger. That's looking very cool. Now, if the light is not exactly right here on the neck, not a huge deal. I don't know where. Where do vampires even bite people? I don't, I don't know. I'm so out of touch with my vampire world, whatever that even means. Um, if the light's not right, you could just click on your bevel and emboss here, and this lighting direction will change. Like, you can continue to change this wherever you decide to put these holes. So, you know, don't worry. You're not stuck with it forever. It's not like... Uh, like a coffee pot your in-laws gave you at your wedding day that you're like, why am I ever going to use this? But every time they come over, they want to see you using this thing and you're stuck with it for life. This is not the same way. This you can change. Isn't that nice? See? All the change in the world. Now let's bring this back in here. Um, that looks so good. If you want to lower the opacity, you can do that. If you want to resize it, you can do that. If you want to warp it again, you can do that as well. Um, what I'm going to do, just kind of like rotate it around so it looks like it's kind of coming down the neck there. That looks so good. Now, it is a little bit further past the camera, so we need to blur this a little bit. This layer right here, if you blur a layer with a layer effect on it, you the layer effect doesn't get blurred. So what we have to do, I'm just going to create a duplicate of this layer. You don't have to make a duplicate. This just keeps you from getting messed up and a new layer above the duplicate, and then shift click on that, two of those, and hit command E. Basically, that just merges together what you had, okay? There we go. Now we can see this is like a merged layer. I just spit a little bit. This is a merged layer with the layer effect on it. Now, if we need to, we can go ahead and add like a Gaussian blur to that. There we go. Looking good. And let's click on this one and apply the exact same Gaussian blur to that as well. All right. I think that's looking great. Now, for time's sake, I'm just going to copy this blood thing and uh, warp it around and we're gonna make the same one kind of go there. You can always use your eraser tool and things like that to kind of get this out a little bit better. Now, we're going to add some highlights to this really quickly. What I'd like to do is just on a new layer, we're gonna grab our brush tool. I'm gonna to paint white at 100%. You can make it like big. This is how I usually do it. I make, this is for highlights. I usually make them pretty big and then I just shrink them down to about the size I need. That way I don't have to worry about being precise or cool or anything like that. I can just do whatever I want and there we go. That's nice. Change your opacity here to get something that actually blends into the shot a little bit more. Maybe we'll put a blur on there and make a duplicate of it and you get one too. Doesn't that look good so far? I think it does. Now, right on the top of all this stuff, we're going to grab this nice blood color here again and I'm just going to paint right over here. We'll change this from normal to like overlay. There we go. So this is like, I don't know, it gets red around areas, right? Let's hit Command U to bring up our hue saturation. 
We're just going to bring up our saturation, maybe our lightness down a little bit. All right, and change our hue a little bit over there. This is where it's going to like get red right around that bite mark. All right, and just kind of lower the opacity there. This is looking so good. We're almost done, guys. I'm just going to add really quick some highlights into like this little area there. And we're just choosing white as our highlight color. And I'm just painting a couple little things here. Adding these highlights, I gotta admit, it's tough. It's tough to know like what's gonna look good and things like that. So I suggest just going for it, you know, try. Just putting some highlights in some areas. If they look good, cool. If not, erase them out, do it again. Step away for a couple minutes, come back, and uh, it'll probably look a little bit better. That looks so good. Now, if it's still too much definition, like I think it is still too much, let's just zoom out and see, looks so cool. If it's still much, too much, like these are too well defined, if you don't feel like going back into all your layers, let's just go back here to group everything I got. Just make a stamp visible layer. Mm, got a little burp going on there. Um, shift Option Command E, stamp visible. Make a selection around the area you wanna blur Okay, and then go to your Gaussian blur, and then you can just blur that. This is like, you know, the quick, easy, poor man's way of doing it, but if it looks good, then it looks good, and then you don't have to explain yourself to anyone because you just did the easy way, and you're smarter for that because you spent less time, and you're awesome at Photoshop now because this. How's that? Um, here at the end, if you really wanted to, I don't know, grab something like your smudge tool. I don't use my smudge tool that often. Not that I hate it. I just don't use it that much. Um, and you can kind of like smudge these things around and make them look like they're following the contours of the neck. There we go. I think that's killer good. You're going to love it. Halloween week, guys. Boom. Done. That's how we do things here at Flirt. This photo shoot that I've been talking about it's huge because I just moved to Chicago and there's a lot of details to get in order. Back in North Carolina, I had like makeup artists, hairstylists, models, all these contacts that I knew and were friends with and we kind of created like a great network. I'm really struggling with like trying to basically rebuild my network from nowhere and uh, it's a lot of hard work, I'm not gonna lie. So I wanna know, what are you guys struggling with? Like with your photography and things like that, what are the things that you know it's like, okay, yeah, I need to get better at this, I need to like do this harder and better and like this is the roadblock here. What are your struggles in your photography journey? Right now mine is just like getting my network back up and running so I can get some photo shoots out of the way. So let me know what are you guys' struggles. Let me know some ideas for what you want to know on the Halloween week. I can't wait to hear your submissions. It's gonna be awesome. Um, bye.